What first comes to mind when you hear about performance in React? Probably memoization. Thousands of functions are wrapped in use callback hook daily in the hope of boosting our app's performance. But if you ever had a feeling that there are too many of them in your code base, you're probably right. Especially if you're working on a large project where everyone is wrapping every function in use callback with the idea that it will prevent re-renders. I can bet almost anything that most of them prevent nothing. Ready to find out why? Welcome to the Advanced React course, episode 5. Today is all about memoization. Everything you need to know about how memoization works and doesn't work in React. We'll start with understanding what memoization is and what problem it solves for us in React. Then we'll look into how use memo and use callback hooks work under the hood. Look into why blindly memoizing props is actually an anti-pattern. Continue with react.memo, how it works, when it doesn't work, and what to do about it. And finally, talk about the use of use memo for expensive calculations. That's a lot of content, so make some coffee in advance and buckle up. Let's start with memoization. Why do we need it? It's all about comparing values in JavaScript. Primitive values like strings or booleans are pretty straightforward. What you see is what you get. When we compare those variables, we compare them by the actual value. With objects, arrays, and functions, it's different. When we create an object, what we have in our variable is not the object itself. The object sits somewhere in memory, and our variable only references that object. If we create another object, we will allocate another part of the memory for this object, and the variable will hold a reference to that new part. And since it's a different part memory part, the reference will always be different. If we compare them, the result will be false. This is what we usually call shallow comparison or comparison by reference. And this is what React uses when it needs to compare something between re-renders, like dependencies and hooks. For example, I created a submit function here. If I want to use it inside use effect hook, I would need to pass it as a dependency. It's, a, it's the rule of the hooks. But what will happen if the component re-renders now? As we know from the second episode, the re-render is nothing more than React calling the component's function. When a function is called, every local variable inside is recreated. Our submit function then will be recreated as well. The submit variable here will have a different reference to a different memory part. So when React compares the submit variable before and after the render, the comparison will always return false and use effect hook will be triggered with every re-render. To fix this situation, we need to make sure that the function is not recreated between re-renders. So that reference to it doesn't change, the comparison between re-renders returns false, and the hook is not triggered unnecessary. This is where use callback and use memo hooks come in. All I need is to wrap my function in use callback like this. Use callback guarantees that it returns exactly the same reference to the exactly the same function for exactly the same dependency value. Since we have an empty array as a dependency, use callback always returns exactly the same reference. Submit value never changes, and use effect hook is triggered only once, regardless of how many times the component re-renders. Use memo is the same. Only in this case, I need to return the value I want to memoize. As you can see, the API is very similar. Both of them accept a function as a first argument. The only difference is that useCallback memoizes the function itself, and useMemo calls that function and memoizes its return value. By the way, there is a minor myth that pops up here and there, that useMemo is better for performance than useCallback. The myth usually says that it's because use callback recreates the function that is passed to it with every re-render, and use memo doesn't do that. In order to disprove this myth, we need to take a look at how those hooks work under the hood. First of all, what is a hook? 
As we know, a component is just a function that React calls for us. Same is with hooks. A hook is just a function that React calls for us. Only the hook function is called every time a component's function was called. In other words, every hook is called on every re-render. Like any other function, it can accept arguments. And when we implement our own custom hook, we can pass everything we want as those arguments. In the case of use callback, it's a predefined function that accepts another function as the first argument. So what happens when we have a function like this in normal JavaScript and call it a few times? First call, the argument function is created. Next call, the argument function is created again. It's a completely new function now. Every time we're calling this function with an inline function as an argument, this argument is recreated. Back to React. This is exactly what we're doing when we use use callback hook. Every time a re-render happens, the use callback function is called and its argument function is recreated. So how come the reference returned is always the same if the function is always new? It's because React caches the very first function that is passed as an argument and then just returns it all the time, sending the newly created function into the void. It updates that cache and returns the fresh reference only if the dependencies change. So this part of the myth is actually true. A function that we pass to use callback hook is recreated with every re-render. So why did I call it a myth then? Because useMemo is doing exactly the same thing. It also accepts a function as an argument, which means this function is also recreated with every re-render. The only difference is, instead of storing that function in a cache like useCallback, useMemo calls it first and stores the returned value. Everything else is exactly the same. This is why it's a myth. None of them are better than the other one. Okay, enough of JavaScript, let's talk about React again. When it comes to using memoization hooks, the second most popular use case after memoizing dependencies is memoizing props. And finally enough, most of the time we're doing it wrong. Let's start with a very common anti-pattern. You surely have seen code like this, right? Well, this one here is absolutely useless. There is this widespread belief that even ChatGPT seems to hold, that memoizing props prevents components from re-rendering. But as we know already from the previous episodes, if a component re-renders, every component inside that component will also re-render. So whether we wrap our own click function in use callback or not, doesn't matter at all here. All we did was make React do a little more work and make our code a little harder to read. When it's just one use callback, it doesn't look that bad. But it's never just one, is it? There will be another, then another, they will start depending on each other, and before you know it, the logic in the app is just buried under the uncomprehensible and undebuggable mess of use memo and use callbacks. There are only two major use cases when we actually need to memo as props on a component. The first one is when the prop is used as a dependency in another hook in a downstream component. Otherwise, if a re-render is triggered on this level, the component's hook will be triggered unnecessary. And the second one is when a component is wrapped in react.memo. React.memo is a very useful util that allows us to memoize the component itself between the re-renders. But its usefulness is very limited. If a component is wrapped in react.memo and its re-render is triggered by the parent and only by the parent, then React won't re-render the memoized component. If this memoized component has props, then React will check whether the props have changed before making the re-rendering decision. If none of the props have changed, then the component will not be re-rendered and the normal chain of re-renders will be stopped. This is again the case when React performs that comparison we talked about at the beginning of the video. If even one of the props has changed, then the component wrapped in react.memo will be re-rendered as usual, as if it, it was not wrapped in it at all. 
This is where use callback and use memo are useful again. With those hooks, we can memoize props that we pass to the memoize component and prevent its re-renders caused by the parent. But making sure that all props are memoized is not as easy as it sounds. Take a look at this component, for example. Very typical code and seems perfectly safe. But what if I do this? Another very typical code that looks perfectly safe. It's just a component that renders another component. Nothing is wrapped in react.memo at first glance, so there is no need to memoize the props as well. As a result, this component will always re-render on the state change of the parent, even though we tried to prevent that. A few nested levels of passing props like this, and no one will ever catch this. And react.memo on this component will be useless. Even if you pass those props explicitly, it doesn't change the situation much. This prop is still a non-memoized object. Those non-memoized objects and functions can be hidden pretty well. Look at this code. What do you think, safe? Nope. The submit is a non-memoized function hidden inside the hook. And as we discovered earlier in the video, hooks are just functions triggered by React on every re-render. So on every re-render here, this function will be recreated. Memoization on this component is broken, it will re-render with every parent re-render. See how fragile this pattern already is? It gets even more interesting with children. Check this one. Again, seems innocent enough. A memoized component with no props. Render some div inside, right? Nope. Memoization here is broken again. Remember the second episode? This nice nesting syntax is nothing more than syntax sugar for the children prop. If I rewrite it like this, the broken memoization will become obvious. As we covered in the second episode, this is nothing more than an object, which will be recreated on every re-render. As a result, the children prop changes on every re-render, and react.memo is useless here. To fix it, we need to memoize the object as well with useMem, for example. Same story with children as render props that we covered in episode 3. Again, unmemoized function in props that makes react.memo here absolutely useless. Use callback to the rescue. Take a look at your app right now. How many of those patterns can you find? And it's actually not where it ends. What do you think about this code? Good or broken? Has to be okay, right? Both of the components are memoized after all. Nope again. Memoization on this component is broken again. It will re-render every time the parent re-renders. It's happening because this is still an object, like any other element. It's just references a memoized component, and the object itself is not memoized. The component that is wrapped in react.memo yet again has a non-memoized prop, and yet again will re-render every time its parent re-renders. To fix it, we need to memoize the object itself, not the component it points to. Fun, isn't it? To finish the memoization story, let's talk about the third most popular use case for it. Memoizing expensive calculations. This one is also misused quite a lot. People tend to do this and justify it by the need to memoize as expensive calculations. But first of all, what is an expensive calculation? Is concatenating strings expensive? Or sorting an array of 300 items? Or running a regular expression on a text of 5000 words? I don't know, and you don't. And no one knows until it's actually measured on a device that is representative of your user base, in comparison with the rest of the stuff that is happening at the same time, in comparison with how it was before or the ideal state, and in the context of the app itself. Sorting an array of 300 items on my laptop, even with slowed down CPU, takes less than 2 milliseconds. But on some old Android mobile phone, it might take a full second. Executing a regular expression on a text that takes 100 milliseconds feels slow. 
But if it's run as a result of a button click once in a blue moon, buried somewhere deep in the settings screen, then who is even going to notice? A regular expression that takes 30 milliseconds to run seems fast enough. But if it's run on the main page on every mouse move or scroll event, it's incredibly slow and needs to be improved. It always depends. Always measure whether a calculation you're trying to memoize is actually expensive or not, and understand it in the context of its surroundings. And speaking of expensive, unless you're calculating prime numbers on your front end, rendering and re-rendering components almost always is going to be more expensive than any raw JavaScript calculation. For example, sorting that array of 300 items on my laptop took less than 2 milliseconds. Re-rendering list elements from that array, even when they were just simple buttons with some text, took more than 20 milliseconds, 10 times slower. If I want to improve the performance of that component, the best thing to do would be to get rid of the unnecessary re-renders of everything, not memoizing something that takes less than 2 milliseconds. And finally, use memo is only useful for re-renders. If your component never re-renders, then use memo just does nothing. More than nothing, it forces React to do some additional work on the initial render. Don't forget, the very first time the use memo hook runs, React needs to cache it. This doesn't come for free. With just one use memo, the impact won't be measurable, of course. But in large apps with hundreds of them scattered everywhere, it actually might slow down the initial render. Death by a thousand hooks. Okay, enough of memoization and React theory for today. Time to open your apps now and fix all the cases of broken memoization there. And in the next video, I will show you another way to break memoization and re-renders. But we would need to dig deep into React reconciliation process for that first. 